few year, uh, many years ago, I think back in the mid uh, 90s, 95, 96, 97, etc. <clears throat> I started watching The Simpsons and I loved it. The Simpsons was like one of the greatest TV shows I've ever like seen. Um, you know, it was animated, it was funny, it was, uh, it, you know, it was hilarious. Uh, it had it had a lot of good characters, etc. But I noticed something, and uh, you know, as the years went on, I realized <clears throat> that the Simpsons were basically running out of ideas. They would repeat the same stuff over and over again. It wasn't as funny as it was in previous seasons. Like every season was slightly worse than the previous season. Uh, so the Simpsons just flat out ran out of ideas. They uh, they just kept going on and on and on. And pretty soon they were depending on guest stars. There was they were depending on uh, stories that are episodes that really, you know, which which really didn't capture you know the magic or didn't have the same originality to it as the um, as the earlier seasons, like seasons one, season two, etc. So as time went on, The Simpsons, so my point is, uh, you know, as time went on, The Simpsons basically ran out of ideas. And at this point, they're on, uh, I'm guessing, season 32. Uh, and The Simpsons has basically run out of ideas. They're repeating the same stuff, and now the accusations are going on. Is that The Simpsons, uh, Simpsons is actually copying off people like, or shows like uh, Family Guy, South Park, etc., etc. Uh, so basically, the Simpsons. My point. My point in all this is that the Simpsons is basically run out of ideas at this point. Their originality to it is uh, gone. So it seems like the same issue is going on with David Wood. He's completely run out of ideas or arguments against Islam. So David Wood and the Simpsons have something in common. They're both. Well, they're both out of ideas. They both basically ran out of ideas. So they're repeating same old um same old uh, uh same old ideas or same old or david wood is repeating same old arguments against islam despite these arguments being refuted over the last 10 years so let's look at the comments or let's look at the arguments that he made in a recent video about the quran myth number one the quran has been perfectly preserved Virtually any Muslim you ever talk to will tell you that the Quran has been perfectly preserved down to the letter from the time it was revealed to Muhammad. Many Muslims will attribute this perfect preservation to the miraculous protection of Allah, who put his stamp of approval on the Quran by guarding it from corruption. In reality, the Quran was changed numerous times even during the lifetimes of Muhammad's companions. According to Muhammad's companion Abu Musa, entire chapters of the Quran were lost because Muslims didn't recite them enough. Muhammad's companion Ubay ibn Kab said that more than 200 verses are missing from Surah 33. Some verses of the Quran even disappeared because of a farm animal. Sunan ibn Majah, 1944. It was narrated that Aisha said, the verse of stoning and of breastfeeding an adult ten times was revealed, and the paper was with me under my pillow. When the Messenger of Allah died, we were preoccupied with his death, and a tame sheep came in and ate it. As a rule, if your God can't protect your book from a sheep, you probably shouldn't be boasting about miraculous preservation. All right, so let's look at the first argument he brought up. He brought up um, the uh, he brought up something from Abu Uwaid Kitab Fada uh, Al Quran about Ibn Umar. Um, then he brought up uh, Sahih Muslim 2286. So basically, you know, the short answer to this is that uh, these narrations fall under the category of uh, Manshuk Al Laf Lafdi which is uh which means something which recitation has been abrogated um what is important to know is that such abrogation happened at the time of the prophet moment not after his death therefore such allegations as such uh, are such abrogation as san as sanctioned by allah in the prophet moment in fact the quran mentions the fact that um allah can abrogate uh, any verse 
in the Quran chapter 2 verse uh, 106 it says we don't abrogate any verse or cause it to be forgotten except we bring uh, better than it or like it so Allah can cause any part of the any part of the Quran to be abrogated or forgotten in fact one way to abrogate the recita recitation of a verse or a group of verses or even a surah is to make people forget it um, this is why Abu Musa mentioned the term forgotten twice. So uh, basically, you know, um, so basically, you know, in conclusion, any change that happened happened during the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad and not after uh, after the death of the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, in the Quran, in its final version, uh, in the Quran after the death of the Prophet Muhammad was in its final version as Allah willed it to be preserved. Um, you know, so basically, you know, if we read, um, if we read, uh, Tafsir al-Qurtubi, it talks about, you know, the narration, uh, the narration of Abu Musa and Sayyid Muslim. Uh, we used to recite a surah in which we liken Barakat in its length and intensity, and I was made to forget it, is a type of Nasa abrogation. The third type of abrogation is when the recitation and meaning are abrogated, uh, you know, so uh, so basically, uh, so no one should ever think that anything from the Quran was ever lost since Allah promised he would preserve it. Quran chapter 15, verse 9. Um, also, the consensus of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad that the Quran which we are to recite and take rulings from is what is between the two covers of the Mushaf, Musaf without any increase or decrease. Uh, you know, so... Uh, Al Suti in his commentary uh, in, in the Quran chapter two verse one or six. So it is from the type that Allah would make people forget after they memorize and would erase from their hearts. This was during the time or during the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad, since there is no abrogation after uh, his uh, death. So uh, basically, you know that this whole thing, uh, the Quran is preserved the way God intended it to be preserved. So. The theory of abrogation uh, means that you know verses were uh, were abrogated or verses were um, verses were canceled out or abrogated during the time of the Prophet Muhammad. So these so this narration found in Sahih Muslim two two eight six uh, and uh, from Kitab Fadil al Quran is uh, is no threat to the preservation issue to the preservation claims of the um, Quran as for the as for the goat eating the the, the sheet or the um, as for a goat eating part of the Quran this narration is actually weak it's not authentic uh, you know um, I, lo I looked into that I looked into that narration and I found that that narration is um, not authentic according to the According to the rulings of uh, according to the rulings of the uh, of the hadith, uh, according to the, um, the the scholarship of the hadith, uh, let me pull up that hadith right now. Then I'll go into the scholars that say that it, that the hadith is um, that hadith is weak. Just one second here. Let me just load. This. Okay, I got it. So basically, this hadith is found in Sunan Ibn Majah, hadith nine nineteen one thousand nine hundred forty four. Um, and this narration is actually uh, daif, or it's not authentic. Um, this is according to Sheikh Suwayb Akhrud, has declared this uh, hadith as weak or not authentic in his classification of Musnad Ahmad. See Musnad Ahmad, volume 6, page 269, hadith 26359. Um, you know, so basically, you know, this, this hadith is is not authentic according to um according to the uh according to the rulings of the hadith scholars um I'll also see sheikh muhammad uh, Taqid usmani in tarak fat al muhim volume one page 69 um etc etc uh so basically you know this this whole hadith about you know, a goat eating the Quran, a verse from the Quran is false. So it looks like uh, it, it looks like Father Basher David Wood, um, you know, needs to go back to the mental hospital because he just keeps repeating the same old stupid arguments over and over and over again 
even though these stupid arguments have already been refuted. At this point, David Wood is like the Simpsons. He's running out of ideas. Um, or, no, no, let me, let, me, let me rephrase that. The Simpsons and David Wood have something in common. They're both out of ideas, and they're repeating the same old stuff over and over again. With David Wood, he's completely run out of our arguments or criticisms against Islam, so he's repeating stuff over and over again. And this shows the sad state of the critics of Islam today. Stay tuned. More videos are coming up. The final videos, I might say.